Okay, everybody, this is uh, section 3.2 for geometry. This is uh, talking about transversals again. So if you uh, had 3.1 recently, um, we learned about transversals and what they did. Um, we're going to expand that and talk about specific type, a specific type of transversals, okay? So if you guys can go ahead, uh, first off, if you could draw this transversal, please and label the angles uh, appropriately. I'm going to uh, kind of skip around through notes here, too. Uh, they're asking us to do some proofs. And I'm going to uh, define all the angles, um, the angle groups, what we did the other day or the last time we met or 3.1. I'm going to expand on those notes first before we try to do the proofs, OK? OK, now the important thing for all this to work uh, today is that when I draw these transversals, you know, this was the transversal line. It's a line that it intersects two or more lines. We're really only going to work with two uh, for now. Um, sometimes we get into three or bigger grids, but we'll, we'll talk about those later. Okay. When, when lines are parallel, I, I have to indicate them to you. So you'll see these other arrowheads that are on the line. If you see arrowheads like that, that's a symbol to say, hey, these the lines that have these arrows are all going to be parallel to each other. Okay, so in this case, this transversal is cutting two parallel lines, and let's let's label them just because they will be labeled at other times. So let's give them. A lot of times you'll see M and N for uh, labeling lines. Okay, but these two lines are parallel. When that happens, these angle groups that we saw in section 3.1, same side interior angles, remember, also it was consecutive interior angles. Okay, so those two terms kind of get flopped back and forth, okay? And then you, you've got alternate interior angles, okay? So if you remember that, what they are, they're on different sides of the transverse line, but they're between the two lines, in this case, the two lines that are parallel, okay? So in postulate 3.1, if two lines are cut by a transversal, then the same side interior angles are supplementary, okay? Now, we got to remember our terms. Supplementary means that there's two angles that add up to 180 degree, okay? So we learned that a while ago, and we got to keep knowing, all right? So let's Let's do these guys together. Um, same side interior angles. So remember, the interior angles are going to be these guys right here. And I'm looking same side. Okay, so if you remember, this transversal right here is kind of up and down. So it's got, I think, a left-hand side, a right-hand side. So the two angles that are on the left are 3 and 5. Okay. But when the lines are parallel, I can add them together, and it gets me 180 degrees. Okay. So that's on the left-hand side. Let's go to the right-hand side. I believe that angles 4 and 5, or 4 and 6, sorry, are on the same side, in this case right side, interior between the lines. So they're same side interior angles, and by this rule, if the lines are parallel, they have to be supplementary, okay? So that's really big, that we use this rule a bunch. Really important that we understand that, okay? And just as a side note, let's, let's look at this. If you looked at, at angles three and four, we need to identify that, that those two angles are also supplementary, but they're supplementary because they're creating that line. And the same thing down here, five and six, you know, they're, they're alternate interior angles technically, but more specifically, they are linear pair and they make up a line. So they're supplementary that way with different angles, okay? So that game, you know, you play games with, with the transversal stuff. You guys will see that. And the only way to play a game is when you know the rules. You can play the game uh, pretty, pretty
pretty intelligently if you know the rules, but that's going to come from study, okay? All right, here we go. Alternate interior angles. So the rule says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of alternate interior angles are congruent, okay? So let's once again go back to what we know about um, what the with the term alternate interior angles. One interior means once again I'm going to look at those four angles, but alternate means it's going to be on different sides of the transversal. And I hope I think you guys understood from maybe the last section that it's kind of a diagonal alternate. Okay, so let's start with angle three. Different side interior, and it's going to be angle three and angle six. Okay, but if we go back to our definition, they're going to be congruent. So technically, they're equal, right? Okay, so angle three and angle six are alternate interior angles, and so that then, you know, usually in these cases, there's two pairs of these. So if I look at angle four, it's on the interior. But it's on the right, so I got an alternate that goes to the left, and it's going to be angle five. Okay, but because the two lines are parallel, I can say that these two angles are congruent. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here and go to uh, theorem three point two, the corresponding angles theorem. Um, I'm going to go back and forth between this definition, that picture that we were using. So I'm using the same angles, right? So we're going to go ahead and corresponding angles. We know that they're on the same side of the transversal line, but in the same position or corresponding positions, okay? So remember I kind of talked about the top of the lines and the bottom of the lines. So if I go back here to, to this, it disappeared on me, okay? I'll erase this stuff, okay? Let's start with angle one, because remember there's a whole bunch of these. Angle one, same side of the transversal, so left-hand side in this case, remember I got left and right, and angle one's on top of a line, so another angle that's on the same side on top of a line is angle five, okay? So by the definition that we had, and I won't bounce back and forth too much, angle one and angle five should be congruent, okay? Remember, corresponding angle, there's a bunch of these now on a transversal. So if I stay this side, angle three is on the left, but it's on the bottom of the line. I'm looking on the left again for another angle that's on the bottom of the line. Well, that looks like it's number seven. Okay, so angle three is congruent to angle seven. Okay, so now I'm kind of done with angles on the left hand side, so we'll jump over to the right. And I'm going to just start at the top with angle two. It's on the top of a line on the right hand side. I'm looking for another angle on the right hand side that's on top of a line. Well, that looks like it's angle six. Okay. So angle two grew into angle six. All right. And um, I'll look at the bottom of the line then. So I got an angle fourth on the bottom of the line, right hand side. So I'll look for right hand side, the bottom of the line. That gets me angle eight. Okay, so that, that goes with corresponding angles. So I'll write that over on the other side. Okay, so angle one is congruent to angle five, angle three is congruent to angle seven, angle was it two and six? Is that right? Hopefully, I'll go check. Angle four is congruent to angle eight. Okay, by um, corresponding angles. But I can now say that uh, that they're equal because the lines were parallel. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to scoot over here. Last definition: alternate exterior angles. So remember, alternate means different sides of the transversal. In this case, the transversal was kind of up and down, so left and right. But exterior. So remember, these these angles are not between the lines; they're on the outside of the lines. Okay. But if the lines are parallel, then the angles can be congruent. Okay, so let me go back to that original picture, bring it back up, get rid of my mess. OK, 
Okay, and let's go by the definition. We are on the outside of the lines and alternate sides. So let's just, angle one is outside the lines. If it's on the left, I need to go right. I need to look for another angle that's outside the lines. On the other side, it's going to be eight. Okay. So angle one is congruent to angle eight by alternate exterior angles. Okay, and I know you guys want to say two, and I get that, but that does, they make something else up. They make up a linear pair that doesn't, it's not part of the alternate exterior angles. And let's, let's take a look at it. The rule says if the lines are parallel, that the angles have to be equal, okay? Do angles one and angles two look like they're equal? Now, obviously, they're not. So that's why you're kind of looking diagonally across the, the transversal, okay? I don't think that's the only pair. So I look at the right-hand side of the, of the transversal, and two is on the outside or the exterior of the transversal. So I go to the other side, the left on the outside, it looks like angle seven. So two is congruent to seven. Okay, so let me go write that down on that definition. Angle one is congruent to angle eight. Oops. And angle two is congruent to angle seven. And that's using that transversal that we that we have. Okay. So there you go. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do some two column proofs and these are going to be um, really important that we get these down. So it's important that you draw these well and write out the definitions. Okay. And I just, I need to say, you know, with proofs, some kids really in the past really think these are hard and they're hard because they didn't, the kids didn't study and they didn't know their rules. If you know your rules, Basically, you're looking at the picture, you're telling me what you see, and then you, you tell me what you know. You got to study the note, okay? So, remember, let's go back over proof. I'm always going to give you something. I'm telling you that A and B are parallel, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw arrowheads on there to say that they're parallel, okay? I have to prove that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, okay? Now, if you're looking at angle two and angle three, well, right now you could say they're alternate interior angles because the lines are parallel, so they have to be equal. Okay, but we have to prove it. Okay, so let's go through this. The first step is given. So if you could draw your two column proof if you don't have this note sheet. Okay, remember two column proof kind of looks like this big, big T. Okay. In step two, they tell us angle one plus angle two equals 180. Why? Okay, well, angle two and angle one make up a line. So that's a linear pair. Okay. Angle one plus angle three equals 180 degrees. Well, now this is where you have to know your stuff. Why do angles one and angle three? equal 180, okay? Well, you should have these four angle headings or groups kind of in your head. Angle one and angle three are on the same side of the transversal. D is the transversal. And they're both on the inside. So if you go back to your rules, if the lines are parallel, then these are same side interior angles. Remember, they have to be supplementary. If you go back and look at those four groups that we had, they were all congruent to each other except for these guys. Same side interior angles or consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Okay. Now, in step four, and this is where you got to know your stuff, and we're going back to uh, chapter two a little bit here on this. They don't give us a statement, but they give me a reason. Transitive property. What was that again? I, you know, I got to know this stuff. So remember, I'll give you a hint. A equals B and B equals C. Therefore, A has to equal C. Okay. Now remember, you've got a B, something that's in common. And typically, when you look at this, you got to go back up and look at the previous steps before this. So if you look at steps one, two, and three. 
or or a combination of them did I have something that was in common well look at this you guys I got 180 in step two and I got 180 in step three so shouldn't I be able to say that this is now equal to that is this my a and my b and this is my b and then this is my c so I should be able to say and I'm going to get rid of the little m's for room angle one plus angle two is equal to angle one plus angle three okay that's what the transitive property does for you and i told you when we introduced that to you that it becomes your friend okay now that maybe that doesn't look too friendly to you but that just helped me out a ton okay so hopefully you got transitive property down if you don't you got to get, get Sorry, class isn't over yet, okay? Now, step five doesn't give me a statement, but it gives me subtraction property of equality. Now, remember, that rule says I can subtract the same thing from both sides of an equation, okay? So if you go back and look what we got now in step four, what could I subtract at the same thing from both sides to get to step five? Well, angles two and three are not the same. Okay, whatever they are, we don't know what they are, but two is not the same as three. But I do have an angle one on both sides. So does that allow me then to subtract angle one from both sides? And it does. And when I get that, angle two is now equal to angle three. Okay. Now let's go back. What were we supposed to prove? Angle two is congruent to angle three. Did we do that? Well, we just did, but they want me to write it with congruence. Okay. So, so that's kind of a silly step there, but doing what we have to do. Okay. So we, you guys, we just proved the alternate interior, uh, alternate interior angles theorem. Okay. All right. So let's go to this proof right here. If you guys could go ahead and. You know, if you don't have a piece of paper, if you could draw this picture, okay, uh, go ahead and draw your two-column proof, all right? And it's really important, too, that you write down what you're given, what you have to prove somewhere, just so you have reference to it, okay? And then, once again, remember, I'm trying to just do these really fast in front of the board. Always, you know, pause yourself so you can write this stuff down before I start moving on. So I, only, I only really pause for a couple seconds, all right? So starting my proof, they told me that A and B are parallel. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my arrowheads on there because I've used the picture a lot to help myself. They tell me in uh, step number two, the angle two plus angle three is equal to 180. And then the Y. So I have to come up with a reason. Well, let's look at this. What are angle two and angle three doing? They, they create a line. So that's a linear pair. So sometimes, uh, you know, the, a reason might be supplementary angles. Sometimes they might say definition of a line. Some, something needs, in, the, in my opinion, has to say linear. So a definition of a line is fine or a linear pair is fine. If I say supplementary, it's not really accurate. Okay. Angle in step three, angle three plus angle six equals 180. Well, let's look again. They're using the same kind of thing we did in the last proof. Three and six are both interior angles, and they're on the same side, and the lines are parallel. So that rule comes into play again, that they're going to be supplementary because of uh, same side, interior angles. All right, and then once again, this transitive property thing shows up again. We just got to remember this one because you're going to use it so much and in many different places. So it's important. Just to, this property doesn't work just for transversal stuff. It works for all kinds of things. Okay. All right, but what's transitive again? Okay. Now remember, last last one. You know, this is pretty similar. I, there's my B. I had something in common, so that means I could take the things that, that are in common and write them equal to each other. Okay, so it takes a ton of guesswork. It's three. 
It takes a ton of guesswork out of stuff if you know your rules. You gotta know your stuff, okay? Next step, subtraction property. Well, what, what's on the, each side of the equal sign that's exactly the same? That's what this equality means, okay? So I think I can, I can subtract angle three from both sides. It gives me angle two is equal to angle six. If I subtract angle three from both sides, it leaves me with two and six. I go up back to what I have to prove. I have to prove that they're congruent. Well, that's just rewriting that last step with the congruent sign in it, and I'm done. Okay. So I, I hope, you know, to be honest with you, these are pretty straightforward proofs, and kids, like I said, struggle with it because they've got they, they think too much and they don't know the rules. If you know your rules, you're playing a game, and it's really pretty easy to just tell me what you know. Okay? All right, here you go. We're going to do another proof here. So if you could uh, go ahead and draw this transversal, and if you could draw in your your two-column proof, so the T thing, and if you could write down what you're given and what you got to prove, And we'll go we'll go through this one, okay? Okay, so A is parallel to B. That's given again. So I'm just going to show that on my picture. Just pictures help me a ton. All right. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. Why is angle 1 congruent to angle 5? Is there some kind of rule? Well, remember the, these four things we've gotten with these angle groupings in a transversal. We want to know those. So if I look at angle one and I look at angle five, what is the relationship? Well, let's see, they're on the same side of the transversal, they're both on the left. Angle one sitting on top of a line, well, so is angle five. If I kind of flip through my notes or if I got this down already, these are corresponding angles. And I can say they're equal because the lines were parallel, okay? All right, now angle five is equal to angle seven. Why? Let's look at that. Why are they equal? Okay, now this is a rule that we learned in, in uh, chapter one, briefly talked about it in, in chapter two. So now it's showing up again in, in chapter three. Important you know your stuff. These are vertical angles. Okay, and I think I talked about it maybe in um, section uh, 3.1, but, and I've already shown you before, when you got transversals, you know, we got all those four angle things, but you also got, you also have vertical angles all over the place too, okay? You got them here, you got them here, you got them down here, okay? You got vertical angles that you can use with transversals. We've already talked to, you know, transversals are making lines. We've looked at it this way, and we've also looked at, at lines being this way. So they got linear pairs. So vertical angles and linear pairs. Put the R. Sorry, for my mess. Oh my gosh. Hold on. That's embarrassing. You got you gotta have these in your head too, because they will help you. Now, let's, in, in a lot of times, too, when you're doing these proofs, once you kind of get a step, you got to, you know, seeing what you know. I'm kind of out of stuff with seeing what I know and whatever. I could say 7 and 8 are a linear pair and 8 and 5 are a linear pair, but I don't think it's helping me to prove that angle 1 is equal to angle 7. Some of you guys look at it and go, hey, wait a minute, those are alternate interior or exterior angles. You're right, but we're trying to prove that. So let's take a look at these two steps right here. What, what do you notice about them? Well, I, I notice that they both have angle five. And so don't I have an A and a B and a B and a C? So what is that? Well, that means I could take angle one as congruent to angle seven. And that's why transitive Okay. All right. So there you go. Okay. All right.
right, if you can go ahead and draw this picture, um, it left out a couple of uh, angles, so I'm just going to write in one and two and three. And I'm going to write them over here. So I'm going to find the measures. Okay. And take a bunch of these rules and stuff and talk about a lot. So we'll kind of go all, all over the place on this. So hopefully, you know, listen and understand. And if you got questions, then ask them when we see each other next. Okay. If they give me one thing. Angle five to sixty-five degrees. Okay. And what they want me to do is find all the other angles just from that one little piece of information. Well, they did give me a second piece of information that's going to help a lot. Okay. So they tell me the lines are parallel. So that means I could use all those things. Now this transversal is drawn a little bit different. We were looking at transversals drawn this way, so I had a left side and a right hand side. Well, this transversal line here is actually almost like horizontal. So I really have uh, an upside and a downside instead of left and right. Okay, so, but the rules still are gonna work the same. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's do this. If I know that angle five is 65 degrees, what should angle six be and why? That would be another test question. We, just don't give me the answer, but why is it what it is? Well, six should be 65 degrees also because it's a vertical angle with angle five, okay? All right, so let's, let's make sure we got, we're gonna play different games here. If, if you know that angle six is 65 degrees, then what's angle eight and why? Okay. Well, I, I can see they're on different sides of the transversal line, and six is really kind of like on the outside, and I believe that eight is also on the outside. So they should be congruent because they're, the lines are parallel and they're on the outside, so they're alternate exterior angles. Okay. So that's 65 also. All right. Okay. If that's 65 degrees, then what is angle number nine? So if you look, what do eight and nine do? They're creating a, uh, a line, a linear pair. So I could take 180 and subtract 65, and that would give me angle nine. And I believe that's 115. Okay. And by linear. So if angle nine is 115, what's angle seven? Well, angle seven should be 115 because they're alternate exterior angles, okay? So if, If uh, angle seven, if angle seven is one fifteen, what's angle one? And it would be one fifteen because it's vertical with angle seven. If angle one's 115, what is angle two? So remember, if you look at those two angles, they're between the two lines and they're on the same side of the transverse line. So they're transversal, or uh, they're same side interior angles. And if you remember, they're the only group that are supplementary to each other. So once again, if I subtract, in this case, 115 from 180, I'll get that angle two is 65 degrees. And 
that's going to be by same side interior angles. Okay. And then, you know, let's let's just take a moment here and look at angle three. Okay. Angle three, I could use I think four or five different rules for it. Okay. I know that it's going to be 115 degrees, but it's, let me, you can write whatever rule you want down, but just hold on for a second. It's going to be 115 because it's vertical with angle 9. It's going to be 115 because it's a linear pair with angle 8. It's going to be 115 because it's a linear pair with angle 2. It's going to be 115 because it's alternate interior angles with angle one, and it's going to be 115 because it's same side interior angles with angle five. Okay, so the, you got these four groupings of angles in a, a transversal with parallel lines. You also have then vertical angles and linear pairs that kind of go with it. You got a lot of stuff here to help you be able to find angle measures. Okay. All right, so that, that's kind of a big one right there. That's like a test question. You might want to um, star that and write test and make sure you go back and visit that, okay? So it's really important. Okay, so uh, make sure if you got any questions, uh, get a hold of me and we'll get it figured out and make sure that you do a good job on the homework that goes with it.